Hello YouTube, Psychofox here. This is a guide to repairing the 3 inch disk drive on the Amstrad PCW8256 and also work for the 8512. So if you buy one of these things, pretty much uh, guarantee that the disk drive won't work. And what you'll get is this. Put a disk in. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's it's just rattling. There's no um, light's not lighting up to indicate it's reading. There's no sound of the of the belt spinning because the belt would have perished and completely disintegrated. So it has to come out. So what you're going to do is, after testing your machine. Uh, leave it off for probably best to do about a day so you don't risk it getting any shocks from the from the tube inside and well that's uh, sort of losing its charge you can get yourself some of these which are 3 inch disk drive belts, I've got mine from a retro computer shack uh, they are pretty much the same belts, they work on the Plus 3, the CPC 612A and the PCW. So get yourself some of them. So just for the purposes of this video. Right. Now I've already taken the stand off the bottom. As you can see here, just two screws and it slots on. This makes it easier to get the back of the Amstrad off. Also enables you to clean around it as well, which is quite hard to do otherwise. Now, unfortunately, you, there's no access to the disk drive from the front. So you've got to go at it from the back. So you've got one long screw there, one there. I've already taken all these screws out. You've got these two, which are quite hard to get to unless you take the bottom off. And you've also got two there that screw into the PCB main circuit board, the main uh, motherboard. Uh, unless you take them out, it's just going to drag the motherboard out when you pull the casing off, which isn't a good thing. And you'll probably end up pulling some wires out. So when that's done, the rear plastic moulded section will just slide off there we go like so so there's the main circuit board there's the power board and this is just fitted with one disk drive but it's got space for another one there which is mounted in exactly the same way so that's what we're going to have to take out and you'll need to get right inside this metal housing it's, it looks daunting but it's not too difficult so I'll do that in part two thanks for watching right so just turn the computer so it's face down on the table and you're looking at the back of the printed circuit board and here is the disk drive so the first thing you want to going to want to do is take out this little cable here and this ribbon cable here remembering that the uh, dotted red stripe is at the top and the next thing is four long screws that hold the disk drive case in place there's one there uh, one there one there and another one there so, to actually get the disk drive out, you're going to want to pull back that little tab which is on the plastic housing the motherboard slots into. So, once you pull back on that, this PCB will lift out and you can manoeuvre the disk drive out. Or, if you're a bit careful like that, you can just sort of edge it around the, around the side and that will give you access to the, to the disk drive. Right, so the next thing I'm going to do is remove this out of casing. Okay, so I've removed 
three, three screws to take off the outer casing from the disk drive. So we're just going to put that in the orientation that it actually fits in the computer just so we know which way around everything is. And then you just need to slide off this inner sleeve and this will give you access to the to the workings of the disk drive. Now in some cases there's an extra piece of circuit board here and you, you've not got a, a view of the belt, but in this case you can see the belt. You can see uh, it is actually there but it's probably a gun a bit slack. So another thing you can do at this point is that is the disc reading head. So you can uh, just flip this little arm out of the way and the bit of isopropyl alcohol on a cotton bud or q-tip just give that head a little a little clean. This one doesn't look too bad. Not much dirt coming off that at all. Alright, so the next thing we'll be doing is removing these screws and lifting the circuit board to remove the old belt and put the new one in. Right, so the three screw, uh, screws are removed. Another thing you're going to want to do is remove any of these little cables because they're going to hinder how far up you can lift the board. So just be really gentle when removing these. Uh, there's quite a few variations of this disk drive this one I think I can just get away with removing that one but on some there might be another one around the other side so with that you can lift up and you can see the belt in there so let's remove the old belt and see uh, see what sort of condition it's in so I'll just with the screwdriver and loop it from the from the wheel Try and get it off a little, little spindle inside there. Just unloop it, and there we go. Right. So the belt is intact, but it's very, uh, very stretchy. And it's not been spinning the discs. Right, when they really go, they get sort of a um, sort of consistency of licorice, and they go all sticky. So, next step is to fit the new belt, which can be tricky, but just need a bit of patience. Right, so the new belt's on. It only took about two minutes. I uh, just looped it around the big wheel here, and let the rest just sort of fall under the circuit board this way. Then, with some long tweezers, just pulled it over the spindle so really uh, really quick and easy this model of the disk drive it's really helped by having that big open area They're not all like this but this was a really easy job quickest one I've done so far so right now what I'll do is reconnect that wire screw the three screws back down slip it in the case reinsert it into the sleeve and then I will slot it back in, redo the five screws, reattach these cables, and put all the uh, casing on, screwing all the screws in, which I removed earlier. Uh, one thing I should not make a note of is that when you're working on these, it's best to keep this circuit board facing up, otherwise uh, the right pin can fall out, a little metal pin which uh, slots into discs, it slots into the holes there the right protection pin can fall out which is a bit of a pain to put back in so yeah keep it the circuit board side up right so let's start reassembling 
Right, so the PCW is all back fully assembled. Uh, it can be quite fiddly to get the rear portion on. Just make sure when you're putting it on that the power cable isn't getting caught on the plastic. And just make sure that the edge connector pokes through. So there's this serial port here, they should poke through. This is, these are the edge of the motherboard poking through the exterior uh, moulding. So, let's see if our new belt's working. Now if you remember it was just making a ticking noise and some will make uh, just various clunking noises and odd noises will come from the disk drive but this is what should happen when you put a disk in. So the operating system is called CPM. You can see we've got a backup copy there of the CPM disk which would have originally come with the computer and they put a copy of LocoScript on the other side which is sort of the word processing package which came with the computer, you can see it says backup copy. So when you buy one of these it tells you to back up your master disks. So LocoScript should load when I put it in. So that's what you should see. Some black bars coming down the screen. And as you can see, LocoScript is loading up. I don't really do anything because I've not actually got a keyboard plugged into this. But yeah, that's how to fix your Amstrad PCW. Thanks for watching. Alright, so I've got the keyboard set up on it now, and yeah, it's loaded fine. It's loaded up uh, one of my recent purchases, Drafts. See that dates from 1988. So yeah, if you've got problems with your Amstrad PCW, that is. Uh, usually nine out of ten times what's wrong with it just a little rubber belt so thanks for watching